Welcome class and today we are going to cover one of the most fascinating holidays celebrated throughout Mexico and also throughout the southwest of the U.S. and that is El Día de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. Día de los Muertos or the Day of the Dead is a two-day festival that takes place every November 1st and 2nd. Although most of us identify it with Mexico. El Día de los Muertos is celebrated in many countries throughout Latin America. And here in the U.S., where we have a large population of Latinx. A number of major cities, including Chicago, Los Angeles, San Antonio, even in Fort Lauderdale and Florida, the Day of the Dead now holds amazing parades throughout those two dates. In 2008, UNESCO proclaimed Mexico's Day of the Dead intangible cultural heritage of humanity. In recent years, the tradition has developed even more due to its visibility in pop culture and its growing popularity in the United States, where close to 40 million people identify as being partial or full Mexican ancestry, according to the U.S. Census in 2015. The most familiar symbols of El Día de los Muertos, or the Day of the Dead, are the calacas and calaveras, skeletons and skulls, which appear everywhere during the holiday. In the early 19th century, the printer and cartoonist José Guadalupe Posada Revision Meet Tecuasihuatl, which is the Lady of the Dead, represented in one of the most famous images of La Catrina. Today, most familias mexicanas, Mexican families, welcome back the souls of their deceased relatives for a brief reunion that includes food, drink, and an awesome celebration. A blend of Mesoamerican rituals that we can trace it back 3,000 years ago have blended with the European religion and the Spanish culture. The roots of the Day of the Dead, celebrated in contemporary Mexico and among those of Mexican heritage in the U.S. and around the world, go back some 3,000 years to the rituals honoring the dead in pre-Columbian Mesoamerica. For example, the Aztecs and other Nahua people living in what is now central Mexico held a cyclical view of the universe and saw death as an integral, ever-present part of life. Their journey varied from culture to culture, but the idea that Mesoamericans saw the Earth as a flat circular disk in the center of the universe and connected the Earth with 13 heavens in nine underworlds. Every person in the afterlife had a duty to carry on doing his or her part in the cosmic process to keep the human race alive. In Nahua rituals, honoring the dead was traditionally held in August. Family members provided food, water, and tools to aid the deceased in this difficult journey. This inspired the contemporary Day of the Dead practice in which people today leave food or other offerings on their loved one's graves, or set them out on makeshift altars called ofrendas in their homes. For example, in the case of the Aztec, they believe in multiple alternative destinations for the souls of people who died. However, one's afterlife depended not on how one lived one's life, for good or bad, but only upon how one died. Upon dying, a person was believed to travel to Chiku Namitlan, which is known as the land of the dead. Only after getting through nine challenging levels, a journey of four years, could the person's soul finally reach Mitlan, the final resting place. For the Aztecs, the human body held several important spiritual centers or souls. One of these was located in the heart, called Yolotl, home to the Teolia. It is the principle of life itself, and it really relates to someone's feelings. Also, the part of your intelligence 
and spirit. So for the Aztec, life dwelt in the heart and in the blood that flowed in and out of it. So the most important gift they could offer to their gods was their own life, their heart, and their blood. And this is where human sacrifices became a center of importance for Aztec's religion. Within the Aztec cosmology, they believed that their gods had created everything that existed in the world, such as earth and water, maize, and animals, and had given them the gift of life. In order that these living beings should not lose their strength and that the world should continue on its course, the Aztec had constantly to renew this divine energy by making offerings of life, of animals, plants, and human beings. As the ultimate symbol of a person's life, they took the heart, raising it up to the sun god and then burning it. The smoke could reach up to the sky and to the sun, will take on new strength and go on giving light and heat, so allowing life to continue on Earth. Archaeologists have found hundreds of funeral sites throughout Mesoamerica, where the dead were buried with personal objects for their journey to the underworld. For example, some Mayan burial sites have been found with skeletons with maize that was placed in their mouth. For Mesoamericans, Maize is a symbol of rebirth and also food for the dead for the long journey. Now that I'm talking about the Mayans, they believe that the soul was connected to the body at birth. Only death or dying of sickness was the only thing can separate your body from your soul. So for the Maya, there is also the concept of an afterlife. We need to understand that the Mayans were way before the Aztecs. And obviously the Aztecs embraced this cosmology from their ancestors. So this cosmology is very Mesoamerican. It really evolved from the Olmecs to the Teotihuacanos to the Mayas and later taken and adapted and perhaps modified by the Aztec. But the concept of death itself is not the same as the one that we have. For then they really move on to a different plane. And that is how we see it today when shamans are trying to communicate with their relative or any spirit that they need to have some sort of contact for guidance or for divination purposes. I am going to briefly explain the concept of heavens, earth, and the underworld. Because when someone dies, and let's say we are here on earth and for most of Mesoamericans, Earth was the connecting portal to go to the heavens. And they view heavens having 13 layers above. And every layer, which is represented by a world, was also guided or controlled by a divine force. The same way, under the Earth, there were nine underworlds. And these nine underworlds were also ruled and guided by a god or deity. As I mentioned before, the afterlife of a person was based mostly on how they die. Some, such as those sacrificed to Huitzilopochtli, the god of war, who joined the battle against the darkness. Remember, there was this idea that the sun was battling the moon. So this duality of dark and light and they needed to fuel the sun with blood that would give them energy to sort of fight back the moon and regain light. Very fascinating. So in Aztec religion, sun will eventually be reincarnated as birds or butterflies or eventually humans. Sun will be, for a time, disembodied spirits roaming the earth. Most at some point will have to make the long journey through the nine levels of the underworld to go to the last destination, which is Mittala or Mittalam. And this is a little bit of how most Mesoamericans view death. And I'm going to let Dr. Janis to go beyond these explanations because the day of the dead 
continues to be celebrated, and this celebration is the result of a syncretism of pre-Columbian polytheism and Iberian pagan and Christian practices. This cultural syncretism has given the holiday its unique folkloric and artistic tradition, and that's where Dr. Janus is going to spend. Here she is.